It's your boy, T.S. And Jamie, and welcome to the Chronicles of Podcast. The Chronicles of Bloodstock 2022. Uh, I'm Chris, I play guitars in Blood Youth. And I'm Harry, I do vocals in Blood Youth. So a question I like to ask every single guest that we speak to, how was your pandemic season? season? I know it's still kind of going on, but obviously music just like shut down, didn't it? Yeah, I think, I, I don't know how close <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, nah. but, um, yeah, no, I don't know. Me, me personally, I won't lie, it was fucking terrible, um, but it's all good now. Um, it wasn't really anything to do with being locked in. I quite like that. I'm quite a secluded person okay. alone, but, but yeah, no, just the circumstances in which it came around was bad, but it, it, it turned out really positive in the end, you know, we're, we're all healthy, we're, we're all still alive, which is the key thing here, Excellent. and yeah, I'm grateful for it. Uh, I think there was a bit of a duality, with it, as far as I go, with uh, the pandemic. I hated not being able to gig or go to a show, I felt like it was a large portion of, like the cornerstone of my mental health had just dissolved. Yeah. Uh, so I was finding things to replace it, to fit in that same gap. And I was trying a lot of different things. I, was, I lost a load of weight. I got into running. I was pretty much cranking out half marathons every weekend. I was just finding, yeah, it was it was great. I was about 12 stone in the end. But now, obviously, I've, I've ballooned back up to my healthy weight. <laughs> you're bulking, you're bulking. I'm bulking. It's a bulking season. I'm doing, I'm doing a dirty bulk right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, it had, its, it had its good bits, had its really bad bits. Um... I was one of the lucky ones who managed to find a little bit of work uh, delivering parcels and that was re- really it took me three months of sat on the couch applying for jobs and drinking and it was that was a real low point it was when I got the structure of a job that kind of I started coming out of the woods yeah, yeah, yeah. if you know what I mean yeah. uh, I can't say I w- I'm looking forward to the next one but uh, it's not that bad and it hit a lot of people a lot worse uh, so I've got nothing to complain about on that side of things hopefully the monkey box one won't be an issue hopefully that's just gonna be oh, a, yeah, a thing that, isn't that? yeah oh, right, i actually forgot that was a thing for the don't honest. you dare oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry harry apologies but how are you finding bloodstock so far obviously apart from it being incredibly fucking hot <laughs> yeah it's all right we we literally just pulled up and like less than an hour later we were coming over to do press and so we've been here for about an hour so far um, and it's good. Like, we walked through the festival grounds. This is Blood Youth's first time at this festival. So it feels good to tick another one off the list. And especially Bloodstock, which is very similar to Download, where it's a very family-oriented like community around the grounds and you know backstage and everything. Everyone's really helpful. No one kind of judges you for anything. And it's, 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 a, it's always a positive place to be around a festival such as Bloodstock. How excited are you for your first set here, then? Fuck yeah, I'm so excited, yeah. We've been, we've been practicing for three days straight before this because we were just like, this one's different, this one's yeah, different, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we've been really homing in on homing in on our set. But yeah, it's going to be really good. We're very stoked. Looking forward to it, it's going to be decent. Yeah, I think you're going to get the, the best version of Blood Duke that we could produce that's coming today. This is going to be the cherry at the end of our, on top of our festival cake we've been baking all summer. Yeah. It's the last uh, proper festival we're playing and uh, we're really going to go for it. Lay something down today that should hopefully go down in our history book. How has the festival season been though? You've been, you've been touring by a bit, you've been in different countries. Oh, we've been all over the place. Uh, we, we, we were at Fight Fest in Czech. Uh, we did Rode Rock in Herzonograph, Germany. We did Full Force. Full Force in Germany, Yara. Uh, it's, it's just like all the fucking, all the ones we got like launched as, we were just like, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we kind of looked at the driving route and we were like, oh no, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> but we made it work. That's what we do. Blood Youth has always been a touring band. This is how we, we, we don't sit at home and, and gain off of like looks and merch and, you know, like social media. We, we have a very close-knit community in Blood Youth and uh, the, the best way to describe us as being so, like we're a live and a touring band. So we just say yes to everything that we can and we make sure it happens. Okay. Yeah. So obviously when, when we originally reached out to you guys, because you are playing on the Sophie Lancaster stage here at the Bloodstock Festival, what do you know of the Sophie Lancaster story and all yeah. about the charity itself? I mean, we know that what happened to Sophie Lancaster and her boyfriend were terrible. Um, but yeah I mean it's overall it's just kind of like 
it's a privilege to be included in such a great event that holds such a strong connection to the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. And, um, you know, there's nothing really more to say about it. I just, it's a privilege to be there and just like flying the flag for Sophie and others alike because, you know, that kind of stuff that happened to Sophie and her boyfriend, it, it, it happens to so many people around the world. It happens to everyone really growing up in this world um, who's into more, not, more of an alternative lifestyle, um, just at a lower level. I think uh, parents and you know kids alike kind of hope that it doesn't get to the stage that it unfortunately got to with Sophie uh, growing up because you do feel different, you do look different, and you have a different kind of routine to a lot of the other kids that you kind of shit like rub shoulders with growing up, and uh, they do judge you, um, and it's tough to get through. But you know it, it's it's when you when you get past that and you're surrounded by like-minded individuals and you realize that you're not alone. That's just. It's it's such a it's just an honour to be here really. What about you? Do you know much of Sophie's story? Yeah, I'm uh, familiar with what happened. Uh, really dark story, really. Um, it is a and dark the story. But I know I know it's I know it's it's a weird one to look at the bright side of a dark story. But the work that the foundation are doing, and especially the minute, is to basically just get that thing alternate subculture put down as a hate crime because at the minute it's not you phone them and say oh i've been bullied and beaten up because i'm a goth metalhead or whatever it is they just go oh well whatever yeah you know and the work they're putting into that and, and for blood start to be flying that flag of the sophie name for so people that go in there and go oh, what's the sophie lancaster about and look it up you know it's an incredible it's an incredible thing they're doing yeah it's awareness it's a, it's a, it is it's awareness well we've all been there uh if you grew up as a goth or an emo on the bus getting bags thrown at you we got chased out of school we literally had to be escorted at, uh, back into school um, I grew up in Warrington and everyone's a chav uh, there was a very small amount of our school that was uh, alternative we all hung out in the same place because it's the only place you were really safe uh, and they chased us out of school they were throwing massive logs at us they were going to get us essentially it would have been uh, and there was hundreds of people chasing us um, that's disgusting and but yeah it, it it happens. Uh, That's what I mean. Like you, you hope, you hope that it doesn't happen to you. You're always terrified being in that position of just you're the only one, you're the only one, kind of growing up. And it's, it's, you know, it's disgusting what happened to Sophie. And like reading more about it, up, like coming up to this festival as well. I, you know, I was reading more about how it is in 2021, uh, 22, and um, you know, seeing how it's still not a hate crime as well is disgusting. It's not considered anything like serious to the actual government or the law, um, and that shit still happens. It still happens in school, and that, uh, that's why like places like this, it's not all like doom and gloom. It's not all, like doom music and screaming and this and that and anger. It's putting that anger in good places, and it's putting that negativity to something good, which I guess is what you were just saying then about how it's as disgusting as it might so might sound. Like something good coming out of it. Is the Sophie Lancaster Foundation that's where raising awareness to these to these concerns that are very very serious, and if it doesn't happen to them physically, it'll happen to them mentally. Their mental health will take the beating. You know, it's a real thing. It still happens. But this is why I love being at places like Bloodstock on Download Damnation, because when you're on your own and you're an alternative kid, it kind of feels isolating. But when you get to come to somewhere like this where everyone's there specifically for the music, they're there to be amongst people who are like-minded. You can really feel a sense of home yeah. and family, and this is why there'll be kids out there, 15 years old, who are the odd one out in their school, and finally they're in a sea of people just like them, and they'll be coming every year because of that. We've all got to band together, strength in numbers, uh, especially in the alternative scene. Yeah, 100%, absolutely. And I couldn't have said it any better, to be honest with you. Boys, this has been absolutely fantastic. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And go fucking smash it. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate awesome. taking your time.